welcome back to Wildwood Cottage Diary and uh, this is my cottage diary where I document my life here in Wales and uh, all the different things that I get up to in my garden, in the house and with my chickens. Occasionally I take you out on a walk but more often than not we're in the garden and uh, today we are going down to the chickens and I'm going to clean them out. I'm going to clean out the bottom of their run and uh, excuse me my fringe is in the way um, I'm going to clean out the bottom of their run and I'm going to put in some fresh compost for them so that they can poop in it and do whatever they like. I'm going to harvest the compost for my new raised bed and for my fruit. So I'll just turn you around and show you my new raised bed because I'm right next to it. This is what I've done so far. I haven't done any more than in my last video when I showed you because it's been raining all the time and uh, it's not been very nice to get out. So it's got um, bark in the bottom off all the log splitting that I've done and uh, I've done a good layer of that to cover the concrete and I've covered all the holes with slate but so the mice can't get through and then I put a good layer of leaves and little branches on the top so on the top of that next I'm going to mix in some compost and some uh, bagged compost the chicken compost and some bagged compost on the top and uh, a bit of sand and then that'll make a nice good raised bed for growing some vegetables in um, we're going to go down to the chickens now. I've also got my greenhouse door to fix, which I'll just show you that. This is my greenhouse. So while the weather's dry, I want to get the door sorted out, which is that there. It needs putting back on properly and um, it needs to have some plastic put on it so that it'll keep the rain out and warm the place up a bit because I want to get my seeds started. Um, so we're just going to get our hack, which is here. and we're going to make our way up to the chickens. So I haven't been able to get out and do much lately because it's just been raining all the time. Um, so I haven't been able to get out. A bit of a break in the weather. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity. Sorry about the noise, that's the chickens. So I've got to clear out all this muck in here, but we're going to get all this soil out because it's on slate. I've got one, two, three bags of stuff out of the garden. I've got a load of turf up the garden, uh, which I'm going to put in there as well. And then they can do what they do over the next few weeks and then it can go back on the garden. So that's going to be useful. So yeah, I cleaned the mouse, I cleaned their hutch out last night, so that's all nice and clean. I'm going to leave the tyre there because it's got some dry soil in it and that's what they like to dust bathe in. So we've just got all this wet stuff to get out. So I'm just going to get the tripod, uh, hook you up, and then see what we can get done this afternoon while it's dry. Right, okay. So I've got my hack and I've got my bucket. And this I've got my spade as well, but this is what I want to use. This is a vintage tool which belongs to the elderly gentleman, which has been here since the year dot. And it's a fabulous tool. It's a great for digging instead of using a spade. And it just loosens the soil and it means that you don't have to put a lot of effort into it. So we'll just do this. And as you can see, it's easily lifting it all out. So I'd highly recommend one if you can get your hands on one. Turn you down a bit. Here we are, you can see better now. Right, so this is my hack. And all you do is you just do that and it loosens it up. Now it's great tool in the garden because it just hacks at it basically. And then all you need to do then is just come in with the spade and put it in the bucket. So I'll just do that. Right. So there's my bucket. I can't find my proper spade. And we just have to use what we've got. This would be great for the garden now. Because they've had it for oh, since last April. There's going to be plenty of poop in it me for the garden and uh, 
they can have some drier stuff with green in it. But at the moment, we're under a house arrest order. They're not allowed out until April, which is a bit of a nuisance, but we get by. They're in the fruit cage at the moment and they're separate from wild birds. So technically they're still hemmed in. Ooh, quite a hard job because it's wet. Mind you, none of the jobs around here are easy because it's only me doing them. So, as I've said before, my husband works full time, so I don't like asking him. I need help if I ask. He's not averse to doing stuff, but I just think when he's had a busy week, he doesn't want my list of jobs. So everything gets done as and when we can with the weather. So, I'm going to turn the camera off and then I'll show you when I'm done. Right, it's got nice big thick pieces of slate, um, so it's all nice and cleared now. I'm not too bothered about all those little bits of soil that are left, I can't be too fussy. It's too heavy to be too fussy. So yeah, what I've got to do now is this is the last bucket and all that lovely compost in my trolley here has all come out of there. So that now can get mixed and put on the garden and I can put that on my fruit trees and my rhubarb. Um, I can also put it round the fruit bushes in here but I don't think it will be needed because the chickens have been going in and out of here all winter and they're foraging great round the roots of the trees so they've got rid of any beasts and bugs and things like that so they've been pooping in there all winter. They've got rid of the weeds that were growing and the grass that was growing and they've done a fantastic job so I'll definitely keep letting them in there at the end of the season I want to start taking them out soon once the fruit starts to form so oh the midges are back because the soil's been moved um, but yeah we've got these three bags one, two, three and once we've put them in I'll take you up the top and I'll show you the turf that I've got to go in there as well and they can break that up. So let's just put the bags in. Right, okay. So I'm just gonna get my first lot of soil and we're gonna chuck that down. All these bags are is uh, potato growing bags, which I'm gonna use this year for growing potatoes. But all it is, is just bits out the garden, weeds, grass, bits of sticks. Oh, there's some plant labels there as well so let's get them out I do have two compost bins as well but uh, I know they like having fresh stuff to scratch in and there's lots of grass and stuff in there so they can have fun stops them being bored while they're locked in in the rain and they make lovely compost Right. So they can sort all that out for me. 
I won't even bother flattening it because I'll come back out in the morning and it'll be flat as a pancake. So they saved me a lot of work. So we'll go up the other part of the garden and I'll show you the turf. Right, so what I'm also wanting to do today, if I've got enough light left, is put some bits and bobs with the raspberries because I've got a few Logan breeze that need planting and uh, I've got some trailing black breeze that need planting as well so I thought I'd try and get them in. That's better. I've also got some thornless black black breeze that uh, I want to put in as well so we'll have a look at that. But anyway I'll show you what I've been up to up here and I'll show you the turf that's going to go in with them as well. So this is a new part of the garden that I've been doing which is my rose walk and it's going to go under the arch here, which I built two years ago now, out of tree branches from the garden. And uh, it's got a rose on there, it's got a winter jasmine on there, and it's got a blackberry on there. Now I've just bought four new climbing roses, so I want to find space for them. And I've got a rambling rector, so my idea is to do this as a rose walk. Now I've got a wild rose here, this one here, which came from my parents. It's got lots of lovely new shoots on it. So that's, that's heralding the beginning of the arch along with my winter jasmine here which hasn't flowered this year, it's just sticks at the moment but it's coming back, it's growing. So that's that. This is my pilgrim David Austin rose and it's got some lovely new shoots on it. And this is a climber and it grows about eight foot. So this is going to fill this space here but what I want to do is have another rose that's going to grow over the top here. Now I thought this was a taller rose so I might move it. I might put it down nearer the house or put it on my um, arch round by the chickens and uh, let that grow there and then put my other two climbers on here because I've got red and purple to go on here so I think that might be rather nice. Um, I did have some Gora here, but the frost got at them, so I don't know if they're going to come back. I've got a pink one, and I've got a white one there, but uh, yeah, it looks like the, fr <coughs> the frost has had them. I've got a Penstem in here as well, which is getting swamped by the Pampas, so I might move that, but not today. Anyway, this is the turf that I've taken up to do my path here because there was hardly any any uh, soil in the bed so now I've created all this extra space here about a metre three quarters of a metre in width and brought the path in this way and then this side it was just a strip of soil so I've brought that out about a metre as well and along the fence there are my apple and pear I've got a cherry I've got some currants and uh, I've got a blackberry so yeah and then over here this is the rambling rector now I'm thinking of putting this on the arch with the uh, that takes you to the gate on the woodland path but I'm not sure because I'm going to put another pergola down there and that arch there so I'm going to make that into a seating area and I'll just take you down and show you. just gives you an idea as to like what I'm up to. Because you just look at the mess and you think, oh what a mess she's made. But here, from here where this wall starts here, is going to be an area to sit and look out at the view. So it's going to go all the way back to the gate and that arch and then that is a the path then that takes us back down to the car. This building here, this barn, is going to get done up at some point into a weaving shed for me and somewhere to do my craft so if I turn you around you can see what I've done now up to the arch so all the way along the edge of the grass here and here is going to be roses and then along the fence here is going to be fruit so it should look nice when it's done especially once I've got roses on the archways as well they'll look really nice it's just finding the right height rose, one that's going to fill the arch 
rather than just grow up the sides. So yeah, not sure what I'm going to do yet. But anyway, this is the turf that's going to go down into the chickens. Um, I've been putting it on the paths as well, so I'm not going to give it all to the chickens. I will finish doing my paths with it as well. And uh, that will be that. So I'll just show you the view from what I'm going to be looking at from my new seat now. There's a couple of sheep up there. Now that you can see them. Let me zoom in a bit for you. There you go. Can you see them at the top of the hill? There's one that keeps getting stuck in the brambles and twice now I've had to rescue him from the brambles. I had to go out on Saturday because he was stuck. Or she. And then there was a couple, a couple of weeks ago, she was stuck. So I had to go out and rescue her. She was uh, crying all night and I was thinking, oh, she's just looking for her mum. Not thinking like that she was stuck. But uh, yeah, so that's them. Right, so I think that's it for me for today. I'm going to take this turf down to the chickens and put it in their run. And then in about eight weeks time, I'll be able to take all that out and put it on the garden. Maybe even sooner, it depends how quick they work it. Um, but I'm going to start saving all the weeds and everything for them and give them them because I need lots of lots of compost for this garden because uh, it's just slate, it's just solid slate and uh, the reason I've had to do all this work up here moving the grass is so I can have some soil to plant in because there's just nothing there but uh, I need to even out this path because it's a bit slopey so I'm going to see what I can do up here now try and even it out and then what's left I'll give to the chickens so I think that's it for me for today. Hope you've enjoyed having a look at what I was doing with the chickens and giving you some tips that if you are getting chickens, there's plenty you can do to give them stuff on their run and make compost for yourself without having to go out and buy it, if you're patient. But uh, it's just a good way of uh, making compost without having to buy it. So anyway, that's it for me for today. I hope you've enjoyed my channel and uh, my video. If you have, please do hit the like and subscribe button and uh, please do hit that notification bell and it'll let you know when I upload new videos. If you do hit the like button I'd be very grateful because it does tell YouTube that you're enjoying the videos that I'm making and uh, they share more of my videos around on YouTube. So I would appreciate it and uh, if you haven't already subscribed please do hit that subscribe button and uh, keep up to date with what's going on here at Wildwood Cottage. So yeah anyway it's been lovely talking to you. I hope to see you again soon. Take care for now. And uh, bye for now. Bye-bye.